That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. driving four hours for getting one photograph. How crazy is that? Hi, my friends, a very good morning. Now, you know, I live around 100 or 200 meters away from a forest uh, where there's lots of wild garlic growing. And the thing is, I ditched uh, my local one to get here, which is around four hours from there. And the question is <laughs> why, well, what has this uh, woodland, what mine doesn't? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, it's really an enchanting woodland, but uh, yeah, more about that later. The goal for the day is really to get out one really strong white garlic photograph. And I would say, let's see what's possible here. Yeah, I can smell the white garlic already. I see a little bit of white garlic already back there, and I think uh, I will try to get in there, if it's possible to get that composition there. But I would say, let's try for that. <laughs> this woodland is amazing, I'm blown away, really, I'm blown away. Uh, from this woodland and the thing is uh, wild garlic photography is a little bit different to other uh, type of uh, woodland photography because yeah you know usually we, we can variate with the height and so uh, the problem really with uh, wild garlic is uh, that we have to go quite low to the ground and I found already composition I'm already in setup and I'm down there and and this is why you get quite limited uh, with your possibilities in compositions. And for those who watch my videos on a regular basis, you know I live in the mountains. So the problem is really our grounds of the, of the forest uh, is more like, like that. And so we don't have open fields or something like that. So like it is here, um, it's really fantastic. We can, we can look so far back there and the, the warm sun is shining through back there from the distance, uh, from, the, from the distant foliage back there everywhere on the top. And that's really, really fantastic. This is something we don't have in our woodlands. And this is the reason why I never got a great uh, wild garlic photograph in my own woodland. I mean, it's not my own, but um, you know, that one beside my house. And it's so fantastic. Yeah, the only problem here, um, also, also on wild, on wild uh, open fields, um, wild garlic um, is boring. I, this sounds weird now because I really love uh, wild garlic, but just wild garlic is boring. So we need anything. Uh, of interest, anything that leads us around. There is no kind of uh, flow when we just uh, um, yeah, go down like that or something like that and uh, look over the field. Uh, there's um, simply the flow missing. We don't know where to look in this composition. And what's really helping here is dead wood. And this is the reason why I came to this woodland, uh, obviously, because there's so much of dead wood uh, lying around everywhere there, everywhere here on the ground, everywhere, uh, not only here. But I picked up this one here now because it has this fantastic curve here. It, it makes this curve, this, uh, this log down there, and it leads back there to the bright part of the image. And this really helps, this really helps me to get a flow in the image. The only tricky thing is, yeah, as already mentioned, we have to go quite low. Uh, actually, it's a combination of flower photography and woodland photography. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really tricky. Also, we need to focus that because my first flowers, and now I will, I, will tell, I will show you that, is just, um, yeah, you see, <laughs> there is not uh, much of distance between. Um, I do it with F16, I make focus stacking, I, I make uh, multiple exposures with multiple uh, focus points. From the compositional side, what I also consider is, when we look here, I consider to have some white um, blooming uh, wild garlics here in front of this dark um, um, log here, so that we get a little bit of a contrast here, so that it's uh, easier to determine that, yeah, this is uh, wild garlic. The only negative side that, uh, yeah, photographing wild garlic, you get quite hungry, <laughs> but maybe it's just, uh, it's just me, <laughs> I don't know. So I would say, let's make the click.
I'm super happy with this photograph. But I would say, you know, I drove four hours here. I have also to drive four hours back. So four hours for one photograph, I would say, let's try for one more. <laughs> By the way, one problem I have uh, at the moment is, you know, I mentioned it already in one of my uh, last videos that I got an upgrade, uh, or some upgrades on my van, and uh, I got them meanwhile, but it uh, took longer than I thought, and um, I also got a, a, a ceiling, a ground ceiling, and I, it, no one told me that it, it smells phenomenally. <laughs> so I had to uh, keep it in my garage uh, for two weeks or so that yeah, I got the smell out. And now the problem is um, yesterday, so uh, tomorrow will come hard rain, extremely hard rain. And this area here is um, very close to a quite uh, big river. So I guess everything will get, uh, will get flooded. I don't have all too much time there. The actual plan was to come here for two weeks or so, but <laughs> it, it looks like uh, I have only this day maybe. I'm not sure what I will do. Um, I will check the weather maps afterwards again. Maybe I will drive to any spot where it's a little bit more safe and then check out maybe another place or so uh, for doing a little bit of um, woodland photography because this, yeah, this woodland is amazing, absolutely amazing. It's uh, always important to look a little bit more behind the bushes and so because also behind the bushes we can see also some uh, meadows uh, really with uh, wild garlic which are hidden uh, here for instance uh, and uh, what I also look for as I already mentioned before we also need anything of interest not only the wild garlic anything maybe that leads us around anything any lines anything um, that uh, helps us to get a flow in the image and yeah here lies a little bit around I would say I will try here if it's possible to find the composition important is also always to look if there is already any path through or so you know, uh, wild garlic is uh, picked or was picked for the last weeks. Uh, it's really uh, fantastically to eat also. The, not the, not the, um, the blooms, not the blossoms, uh, more the, the leaves and so. And uh, yeah, so there are uh, many paths down there. And I think I found already a zigzag and I will have a look if it's possible to do anything with that. So <laughs> let's give it a try. Oh man, <laughs> this woodland is absolutely amazing, really. I'm totally in love with it. And this approach is really a good one just to look for lines, for looking for maybe dead wood or whatever, any trees or anything, uh, any woodland composition actually. And uh, then I try to include the wild garlic that it adds to the composition. And in this case, I got attracted by this uh, crown of uh, leaves in the foreground, these uh, wild garlic leaves and these, uh, these flowers here. And we have this zigzag back there and a little bit of woodland back there with trees and so. And this looks really, really fantastic. I really, really like it. And yeah, we definitely have to make compromises. As you already mentioned, we, we can't go uh, higher or lower as, as much as we want. I mean, yeah, we, we can, of course, but we, we have to consider the foreground. And the foreground is quite small. We always uh, want to have, in most cases, the wild garlic quite prominent in our frame. Because when we go too, up too high, as you can see it at the moment, uh, you can't spot any wild garlic. I mean, just when you know it, of course. But we have to go quite close to get it really out, that we know it's a wild garlic photograph, actually. Same as before, I have a circular polarizer on it. It's really important. Yeah, I want to, to bring all these greens out, all the contrast and so. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, what's good. So all the bugs are also quite wet and so when the springs it really out. It's really, really fantastic. Yeah, and I often mention this in my videos. It's not possible to focus tag in woodland. It is uh, when you do wild garlic photography and you are quite close to the ground and you have no wind at all so that the flowers are really, really still, nothing is moving and then it's possible and we need to do that again. We are so close to the foreground. It, it would not be possible in another way. So I would say, let's make the click.
and a good idea is also not only to look for wild garlic compositions, I mean there's so much of wild garlic, but anyway the woodland is so enchanting, so much dead wood laying around everywhere here and there, it is amazing. So I'm not sure, we just keep my eyes open and uh, maybe we will find one more composition in this amazing primeval woodland here in Austria. <laughs> it is crazy, I mean the rainforest of Austria. Just look here, so much of dead wood is lying here around. It is amazing. Uh, it, it is really, it is so untouched here. Uh, the trees are not uh, cut and so, uh, I mean some of them are cut uh, which are on the, on, the, on the path, on the trail, you know, and it's not dangerous when you walk through or so, but um, everything, everywhere beside the path, nothing. It's really, really amazing. So much dead wood. And, uh, the, only, the only thing is that the grounds are, are quite busy. Um, I, I walked now for some kilometers even. It's really, really busy. Uh, but just this thing here. Here's not all much going on on the ground. I mean, there's amazingly much going on uh, up there on, on, on the trees uh, or the branches everywhere and so on. But maybe, I mean, we have, you know, dead wood. We can use this as leading lines. And, uh, yeah, it's really, I think it's really fantastic maybe to tell a story maybe of uh, yeah, a scene, a woodland scene. There, there are trees living, there are already dead trees down there. It's really fantastic, this contrast, isn't it? It is amazing. So I would say I will try here for something. It is so enchanting, this woodland. It is really amazing. Just look back there. <laughs> this tree here, amazing. And all the mosses up there, up there and everywhere. And so, and the thing is, not only the ground is quite busy. I mean, here, this particular place is uh, a little bit less. Uh, even, uh, we need a little bit more even. But uh, fortunately, we have the dead wood uh, because this would be yeah, quite boring as, uh, as, as ground. But the thing is, also the branches are quite busy. When you look up there, thin branches, totally th thin branches. And this makes it quite difficult to take close-up shots. So, you know, with a little bit longer focal length where you zoom in or so, uh, it will not work with the depth of field. So what I did is I, I use a, a shorter focal length, the same as before. Uh, before I used a 16 to 35 millimeters lens. This is now my 24 to 70 millimeters lens. I, I go a little bit longer now than for the other shots, but anyway, yeah, uh, quite short uh, for a woodland scene. And uh, what I got attracted by was uh, this log here. I mean, there are many locks, but this is fantastic because it leads fantastically into the scene. When you look back there, I'm not sure if it's uh, possible to see with this camera here. In the, in the distance, everything gets a little bit more vibrant and bright because the light comes uh, in from, from, from there. And uh, we have these fantastic leaves down there. Um, and uh, yeah, they are really uh, my, my anchor here in this image to lead into the frame. And we have more dead wood back there, more back there and so on. And as already mentioned, um, I, I would actually need a little bit more on the ground. In the woodland, in my local woodland, there's al always uh, much going on. There's so much uh, uh, where I go quite high usually to get uh, to find the lines, to lead back and so on. In this case, it's, it's better that when you look here, when we're high, uh, we have uh, yeah, empty space everywhere. And, and when we go lower, we can uh, make this smaller. And, and this is what I did here. I went also quite, uh, quite low here. Uh, do this foreground element, I also have to focus stick. It's also not the biggest problem here. Uh, it, it's amazing because we have so many leaves, every, uh, so many trees everywhere around. Uh, and and it's, it's also not really wind, it's totally still. And yeah, we also don't have uh, all the many leaves uh, <laughs> up on the branches. It also helps, of course. But also the branches themselves uh, could also uh, move, of course. I use a circular polarizer also to get the colors better out. And uh, yeah, I would say, mostly here is it, I would say, Let's make the click. I'm at the same spot, uh, I just uh, 
yeah, tweaked a little bit uh, with the composition. I, I built up an, another one with another foreground. I uh, found this dead wood here now. And yeah, I, I use simply all the lines and shapes here to lead us into the frame, back to the distance, to this amazing primeval forest. Here in Austria, it's really amazing. And it, it's difficult, we have to make compromises here. I don't get the perfect photograph here out. It's, uh, you know, there gets a branch in, there gets a leaf in and so on. I tried really hard and I, I tried different things, but yeah, in the end of the day in Woodland it's always all about making any compromises. Woodland is uh, chaos, There's, uh, yeah, this is the place where chaos uh, got invented, <laughs> I think. And uh, yeah, um, I would say from the technical side it's not all too different from before. I also went cli uh, qu uh, quite um, close to the foreground, also quite low, also to get rid of uh, yeah, this uh, kind of empty space here but doesn't really add all too much to the composition. And yeah, I would say, let's go over here. Let's make the click. This woodland is so fantastic, it's really, really amazing. And I mentioned already that I got upgrades in my van. Uh, one I mentioned already, this was a, a ground ceiling that the van gets older or it holds longer. And the second one is, um, yeah, I complain so often because of the gas heating. Um, I, I think uh, two to three nights and one gas bottle is empty when, I, when I'm heating. And this is, this is quite um, difficult when you're, when you're traveling around for multiple weeks maybe, uh, because you always have to look around where can you buy gas bottles um, and exchange them. And, and this, is, this is not funny to be honest. And some of you gave me the tip of, uh, in my comments in, below my videos, uh, go for a diesel heating. And I asked my distributor and he always uh, just uh, offered me the possibility of exchanging the gas heating with the diesel heating, this was extremely expensive. And I researched a little bit and I found out that it's possible to build or to upgrade a, a diesel heating additionally do the gas heating. So now I have a, a gas heating and a, a diesel heating. And the, the thing is, um, it was so difficult to integrate it because um, I didn't want to, to um, lose space or something like that in my van. And I also didn't want to uh, put it outside of the van so that it, it gets uh, yeah, damaged after uh, two or three years or something like that. And the solution was I, I built it between the ground and the floor. And this is really amazing. You can't see it. It is not outside and not inside. It's uh, between the floor. It's, am it's really amazing. And this took uh, extremely long and the ceiling, it smelled so much, it was amazing. I had to wait um, yeah, two weeks now that I was able to, to sleep again in, inside the van. This is the reason why I wasn't able to drive here earlier. And the rain now, which will come, is a little bit uh, a difficult thing. I will check the weather maps right now and if it's not possible I will uh, drive home. And when it's possible I will maybe yeah, look for any campsite anywhere uh, where it's safe and maybe they will come. Yeah, one more video, not exactly at that place, maybe another place in this area. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this video of yes. Please give me a thumb up. And don't forget to tune in next week. There will come a fantastic video as well. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.